Good evening everyone. So it's been a while since I've uploaded a video. Um, and the main reason for doing this is one of my friends um, has actually uploaded a course on uh, PGA Tour 2K23. And I've been playing this game for a few weeks now. Um, so there's a a YouTuber called the Pro Spartan Gamer, who I've been following for a number of years, and he just let me know a couple of days ago that he's actually uploaded uh, a created course, and um, I was actually going to record my first round on it as a reaction. Um, unfortunately, um, I've had a few issues with the microphone and the recording, etc. So this won't be my first time playing it. So it won't be a first time reaction, um, but got to say it's a it's a really nice course it's uh, a little bit different um what i'll do is i'm, I'm going to leave a, a link in the description to his channel he's actually done a like a tour of the the course itself he hasn't played all the holes or anything um but he, he showcases sort of the overview and plays a couple of the holes so i thought we'd dive into this um it's called arenas of sparta so definitely give it a go because um like I say, I've played it actually a couple of times now already, and it's a it's a really fun course, and you'll you'll see what I mean when we jump into it. Um, but yeah, I've been having some issues with the the microphone setup. Um, I'm actually playing this on Steam on my on my uh, gaming laptop. Haven't recorded on here before. Um, previously on videos, I've just recorded on the PS4 and then the PS5. Um, so which is a little bit more straightforward. Um. So yeah, I'm actually using a different microphone, so it might not sound great, um, so apologies if it doesn't. Okay, we'll jump into the course, um, and you'll see what I mean. So, the pro Spartan Gamer, obviously he's got Spartan in his name on the on his username, and this is called Arenas of Sparta. So he's obviously got a very good affinity with um, the law and the, the history of that. And you'll see that in this course. Um, there's a lot of elevation changes in this course um some really nice tricky greens but nothing i think part of the issue with this game is has been sometimes the greens are just ridiculous um not from fault of users creating them just if you have it on a fairly high difficulty the greens can be you know just so punishing but not in a remotely realistic way Anyway, we'll jump into in into the eighteen rounds and we'll see how we get on. See what I can remember. Um, so this one is uh, a par four. Um, I know it's a dog leg right, so I, I believe normally I want to play sort of a wood rather than a driver. So probably want to end up around about here and it'll stroll stroll down a bit down to here. Miss those bunkers first time I played this I did end up in that bunker there and then you've got a downhill approach uh, to the green so I'm actually using the three click system um, and I really like it um, it's probably not for everyone but I'm actually getting a, a new love for the game with this um, I did have 2k21 and I enjoyed it but I didn't play it as much as probably previous games um, but with the three click system in this game um, I don't know I, I just I, I like the feel of it um, I seem to be a little bit more consistent with it um, okay so we've got a massive downhill approach here so um, just for reference I might give a couple of tips as well like I say I'm not like an amazing player or anything but few tips I can give I suppose so wind generally if it's directly in your face um, you just want to add on however many miles an hour is to your approach or your shot so if it's 10 miles an hour in your face you're probably going to need to club up an extra 10 yards vice versa if it's a tailwind you're gonna have to drop uh, the miles as well it's slightly a bit more tricky when it's crosswinds or if it's diagonal winds you know, you have to take that into account a little bit differently. Um, 
and generally for every three feet um downhill um you'll take a yard off every three foot up, uphill you add a, a yard on so what i normally do is clearly you just divide this by three and i'll take that away so this is roughly um probably just under 40 so about 38 ish um so say that's about 145 this is not helping so it's about probably playing about 150 i would say um might just put a little bit of loft on anyway it's not really a tips for running it's really just have a look at this course like I say, I've been following the uh, Pro Spot Gamer for many years. Um, see, that's a nice distance there. Um, he hasn't uploaded a massive amount of videos um, the past couple of years. He's obviously taken a break from it, but there are some relatively new stuff on there. Some highlights from eFootball. Um, like I say, 2K21. Um, but he's got plenty of old series on Pez. Um just missed there some great master league career modes on there um one of my all-time favorite youtubers um like i say i'll leave a link in the description uh, to check out his channel if you can so this one i do remember so um this is a really interesting one actually it's a par five now as you can see there's like rocks right in the middle of the fairway here what you want to try and do is basically pretty much get alongside those rocks um, you've got the green here over this big lake now if you end up a little bit short these trees will be in the way so you can't go for it and get a bit a little bit too long same again so you might have to lay up here and um, so what we're going to do is try and just aim left of the uh, the rocks here if possible uh, the winds not helping we might not actually make it to be honest I know it is downhill, but yeah, this uh, may get lucky. If we don't, it's not a massive deal. And also, well, we don't want to go on the rough. Oh, yeah, there's no way I can go for it. Not only is it in the rough, Oof. could we? Could we go for it? Ooh. So that'll play about 205, 211, 212, say. But it's only playing about 90%, so we're really going to have to club up probably to like a wood and. Is it worth the risk? Let's do it. Might as well, eh? I just hope I've got enough club on this. Um, chances are it's probably going to just. Oh, there's rocks right there as well. Let's go for a little bit more than 100%. Yeah. Oh, that's... Oh, now if I hit the slope... Oh, this could be good. This could be good. Oh, I just went a little bit too far to the right there. That that was close to going right back to the, uh, the hole there. We're in the light rough. That's not bad. Um, bit of a tip on chips. What I normally do is... Um, I had a bit of loft, probably about halfway, a little bit of spin. Now we're in the rough, so we need to take that to account, so put him a little bit harder. Um, and that's sort of what I normally go for, and it's normally pretty good. Yeah, a little bit, didn't really think of aiming to put us there, but... So yeah, that's, that's a really interesting hole, because depending where you, you end up, the green's quite forgiving. You've got that big slope, so you can really take a shot at it. Now we've got the first par three on here, so it's um, 23 foot up. I can do some maths, that's about seven or eight yards. So probably about 135. The wind's probably going to pull that back a little bit. Um, oops. So 135. I could put a bit of D loft on. That might be a little bit better. And someone, I uh, did say something about wind generally. Well, let's try it. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to aim about eight or nine yards right. Let's see if that works. Eh? I did see a video where, yeah, see, it still hasn't turned as much as it should have, I don't think. Hmm. I did have a bit of deal off, but for putting as well, generally it's considered, they're obviously different paces on the green, but generally it's for every one inch uphill, you add a foot. For every one inch downhill, you take away a foot. Now, downhill puts tend to carry that little bit extra anyway, like more than the actual one foot for one inch. Um, and the longer the downhill puts, generally the the momentum sort of builds up. So this is just a straightforward level put. I like to sort of go down on the, on the flat. And I haven't really got an exact method. It's more of a feel. I do take these grid lines into account. And based on, and this is a relatively straight put. So we're just going to go straight at it. Um, just missed. That was a trick one to tell if it was really left edge, right edge or straight down the middle. So if we get a bit more of a difficult put, a slope and put, I'll probably show you what I normally do. Um, so we've got another power five here. Now this one, can we aim over here? We can't. Ah, I know, I know this one. Yeah, this is another interesting one. So obviously you can sort of go over here, go over here, then an approach. Or you can take the slightly more risky route. Um, you've obviously got a, like a river along here, you've got two bunkers, but if you can get in between these bunkers, you've got a good uh, approach shot here. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll aim pretty much slap bang for this bunker, put a little bit of fade on, and hopefully I'll just go to the, the left of the... Uh, the bunker to the left of the bunker bounce over the bunker oh wow this is gonna be bad Ooh, again do I go for this yeah and this is a really interesting green here um got a massive basically a cliff edge there with bunker lots of bunkers around it, and you've got this big slope now, if you can find your way in here, this is relatively flat once you're on here. But, um, yeah, with a bunker. It's playing about 90%. Um, do you know what? Let's... I don't know if I've got enough club here. And I've aimed to take account for the wind and the wind hasn't taken effect hmm okay so we've got a chip now do we want to chip it or do we want to um right what I'm going to do because it's so uphill I'm going to put lots of loft on bit of backspin uh Oh, really overshot that massively. I was in the rough, so I thought it would um, got to be careful here because it's downhill and there's slopes just here. So, gonna make sure we're not long. This is gonna take up right instantly a little bit, so we'll just aim just outside the left edge. Nice, perfect. So, fifth hole, um, par three. I love the par threes on this course, by the way. Some really nice par threes. Um, yeah, quite a small green. Quite short, but a small green. Um, obviously, lots of danger around here. So, 42 down. It's around about 14. Uh, so that's about 141. The wind's helping a bit. So probably about 
135 ish, 136 maybe. Ooh. I'm gonna play it like that. Maybe like that. Yeah, we'll see. This, uh, this could go wrong, but I feel that's about right. No, that's looking good. Maybe a little bit hard, but didn't want to risk heading towards the water. This might be a good putt to show you, actually. So generally what I do is I just get a feel of, you know, again, it's not that slow bending, so it's not great, but using the grid lines just from previous experience, you know, do I aim for a grid line, a full square, setting grid line, etc. This one, I would say it's probably going to be about halfway. Um, so very, very close to getting that right. Not bad at the putting, actually. So on to the six, par four. Um, not sure I remember this one actually too much. This is a relatively straightforward um just a drive. We'll again aim Yeah. Left edge of that bunker. And hope the wind just brings around right into the centre of the fairway. That'll do. One thing it's always best to do as well is check your the lie when you're in the fairway. Um, now on the PC, you hold shift. Not sure what it is on consoles. Um, I'm sure most people know this, but if the ball's above your feet or the beads are sort of flowing towards your player, um, you'll just want to aim further right. This is for a right hander, obviously. Now, if the ball was beneath my feet and the beads were going right, then I want to aim further left because th this naturally will go slightly left rather than where I'm aiming now. So it's best to take that into account. So again, I've got a nasty slope here. So if you go right edge, you're going to roll off down here and have a nasty putt. Um, this is playing about 162, probably about 170. So, if I, if I put a little bit of D-loft on, yeah, I'm going to aim just on the sort of crest here, and it should bring it back a little bit. I should really maybe show you the three-click as well, what I, what I actually do, or what you're supposed to do with the three-click. That's a lovely shot there. Um because I'm sure many people haven't tried it. It wasn't previously in, as far as I'm aware, any of the 2K games or the golf club game as it was known when it first came out initially. Ah, yes, this is a par four where you can actually go for it in one. I don't think I've ever, ever actually landed on the green. Um, I don't think. It's just trying to find that centre bit. Oh no, I have. No, sorry, I have landed on the green before. Because I think normally you can actually overshoot it. You want to try and make sure you catch this slope. Um, so I'm going to aim probably left edge there. Um, I might aim a little bit shorter. Put a little bit of deal off. Just a little bit. Hopefully I've got the direction about right. Hmm, this could be bad. Yeah. Didn't take into the account of the wind enough. Um, so, got a splash shot here. What I'll probably do is add on quite a bit of loft. Um, bit of spin. Now, bear in mind that when you add loft, spin, draw, etc., it makes the shot more difficult. The, uh, the zones shrink, so it's easier to miss hit it. So, just bear that in mind. Um, yeah, about there I'll do, I think.
just hope this doesn't roll too much. That's nice. That's very nice. Um, again, this is probably just outside the right edge by maybe a ball. Yeah. Four under, not too bad. Par three. Now, this one's quite an interesting one. So, at first, this looks like a really difficult par three. Um, you know, it's nearly 250 yards. It's downhill. Obviously, you've got the wind, you've got bunkers, you've got water. But if you actually look at the, the the green itself, it's quite forgiving. You've got this sort of concave effect here. So if you manage to get somewhere on the green, it's probably going to be okay, um, he says. So downhill 41, that is about what, 13, 14. So it's probably playing about 230. So that's about right. Now the wind's really... This is going to be a tricky one to judge, but let's play it like that. Now, if it misses the bunkers, we've got a really good chance here. And that looks good. Um, should have been a bit, a bit less than that, actually. Now, it should come back a little bit. Yeah. Nice, look at that. Within about five or six feet, seven feet. Nice. I'm really, honestly enjoying this course, and I am biased because, um, you know, like I said, we really love the the channel um, that the Pro Spotting Gamer has, and um, got them on Twitter and stuff like that, and you know, interact sometimes with them. Um, so I really want to try this out, but genuinely, if this was just a random course, I'd. You know, it's one of my favourites. So, uh, par four. Now, this one you can obviously sort of lay up, but then you've got a massive shot in here. You've got three fairly, well, two large bunkers and a, a smaller bunker that you've got to try and avoid. Really want to go sort of towards the trees. I think from what I remember, it's best for you to aim between that, th this sort of red tree and the yellow tree. Was it this one? Maybe it wasn't this one. Was it this one? Ah, yeah, sorry, it was this one. Unless you can. Oh, no, that's tricky. So, yeah, probably aim around about here. You want to end up over here somewhere. Um, now, if I get a good bounce, that's a good bounce, I think. Yes. Yeah, so the lie is uh it's gonna be tricky with the wind as well. Right, practice swing. What I'll show you is, is the actual three click swing. So what you do is you this is the power gauge, so the white is where you're aiming. So if you get it in the white zone, it's gonna go at least, you know, to the power that you've selected. Red is obviously extra power graze under hitting. So what you do is you press and hold and uh, the circle will expand and you want to let go when it goes into the, the white circle, if that's what you're aiming for. And then this bar will start to move around anti-clockwise. And what you want to do is then stop it within, uh, there'll be a white zone here and then it'll continue around and then you want to stop it in this white zone here. And obviously it goes quite quickly a little bit of a tip if you use the three click swing and you make a mistake and it takes a bit of practice to get used to but if you stop it too early on the first one I recommend stopping it around about the same too early on this side and again if you stop it too late stop it too late on this side so what it does is if you stop it too early it tends to hit it right and hitting it too early here will then start hooking it so the It'll then hit it right, but then hook it back in. And the opposite with hitting it too late and too late. Um, they sort of counteract each other. Obviously, that's not ideal, but it just means that if you do make a mistake on that first click, you have got, I mean, a matter of milliseconds to then try and react to, to counteract, to minimise the damage, I suppose. So I'll 
if I show you the practice swing to the white zone, um, I said into the white zone, it's actually a yellow zone. I um, didn't realize that. But yeah, so you press and hold into the white and then into the yellow zones. That was perfect, that one. Now, the harder the difficulty setting you play on, the smaller these zones will be, so you don't get as much forgiveness. But anyway, back to this. So you've got about 140. Um, the wind's going to stop that a little bit. So I'll put a little bit of loft on, but not too much. And then, I mean, I was advised that for every one of these squares is a yard. And for complete side winds, what you want to do is, um, for every mile an hour, you want to add 1.4 yards left or right. Now, I've seen the test video and it looks spot on. And when I initially tried it, it seemed correct. But I think it's very inconsistent. So I'm going to aim about, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's about 10. So I'm going to aim there because it's probably the safer team slightly further left than needed if possible in this one and I haven't aimed left enough <laughs> so ooh, just speed that up a bit that's okay though that's okay um the greens are very inconsistent I don't mean on this course I mean in general like the speeds here like it looks like it's sloping left but then it, there's nothing showing here so I'm gonna aim a little bit right but I'm not really sure by then if it's taking effect we'll see yeah, so that was that was good, good judgment. But par five, and this one is a relatively straightforward um, sort of drive. Just trying to avoid the bunkers, and then from what I remember, I don't know if I've ever really had a decent shot into the green. Um, can't remember that or not, but it really depends on where you're going to land on this, obviously. So. To be honest, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of extra power. I added a bit of fade, which I probably shouldn't have done, but that's perfect. Now we'll see if we've got a shot. Well, mm, potentially, the lie's pretty good. Well, you know what? Might as well go for it. So this is plain. Yeah, so I'm going to have quite a bit of deal loft. I'm going to aim a bit short, a bit left. Normally, I probably would have taken a little bit more time to sort of judge exactly what I'm doing there, but yes, I've totally misjudged that. Um, oh, I mean, look at the top right here. This... Wow, I mean, this isn't. This is just not. This is just not going to go anywhere. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't think there was any way out of that. Um, I just completely plugged into the uh, the face of the bunker there. So we're going to take a bit of a hit on this one, but if this can stop quickly. Nope, didn't put enough spin. Oh, but the slope's bringing it back. Uh, this is for par. Battling to save par on a par 5 is not great. Um, it's going to take it right, back left a bit. I think I just aim straight. I think these cancel each other out. Yeah. I was going to say good save, but not really. Um, par 4. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, so it's downhill. Ah, yes. Yeah, so initially, I remember thinking, "Oh, I wonder if I can aim over here." Um, I, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, so the rock is no. I mean, three hundred and thirty yards there. I haven't. Uh, I mean, those of that play this game will know that there's um, different types of players you can choose, like different. Um, What's the words like almost like presets what type of or like all-round player yours will be so is it more of a power player position player got it um drawing and fading shots different things 
wouldn't say any of them are supposed to be better or worse. Obviously, some have probably got more advantages, really. Um, but mine is not a power hitter. Um, so maybe if I was a power hitter and with the wind help in there, which it was, maybe could have gone for it. But we'll just lay up. Um, and I remember this is a really tricky shot, even with laying up. Yeah, so we might not make this. I can't even see where I'm aiming. Um, yeah, full loft. Did I put the loft on? on? I did, yeah. Or did I take it back off? No, that's fine. That should stop quite quickly. Stop quite quickly. Hit the slope. Come back. Oh, unlucky. If if it was a tiny bit softer, that would have hit the slope. It would have started to come back. So I'm going to add a little bit more loft than I normally would. Because this is downhill. Nice. Nice little chip in there. I'm getting quite good at the chip ins. Well, the chips, rather. Didn't used to like them on. Well, I d any sort of golf game I played before, even back in the Tiger Woods games, I didn't like chipping. Um, I could just never get it quite right. And for some reason in this game, I just tried around with a few things and yeah, uh, adding that sort of half loft on a little bit of spin generally works. Um, ah, th I think. Yeah, another par three here. I think this is one that's one of my favourites. So you're aiming in this sort of the Coliseum. This is the shot here. So it's just short of 200 yards. It's, you know, 90 foot downhill. You've got a relatively small green and it's surrounded by these, you know, cliff faces and bunkers around the edges. It's, it's a lovely looking... Um, and from what I remember, I think maybe about two clubs down is the best the one to go for. Um, I didn't put any D loft on, but that looks good. That looks good. Oh no way! Wow. Okay. <laughs> oh no, please don't do this to me. You have got to be kidding me. Oh, this game is so infuriating. So that is my very first hole in one and I'm glad I was recording that, but it looks like it's frozen, so that's probably not going to count. So I may have to jump back <laughs> into this game in a minute. So I'm back. I've loaded up the game at a force exit. Um, now this has happened to a few times to me before, but normally when you go back in, what happens is. It will either start back to the shot you just played, so you have to repeat the same shot, or the ball will be right next to the hole. Even though the ball went in, it'll then say, okay, well, actually it didn't go in, it landed right next to the hole, and you've now got to take a shot, so you basically lose a shot. For some reason, um, it's actually counted the shot uh, correctly. So there we go. I've actually got my first hole in one officially. Now, I didn't get an achievement for it. Now, that may be because it's not an official course. From what I remember, I think someone else saying, it might be on 2K21 that, or might be in this game, that hole in ones only count on official courses. So, <laughs> I feel kind of unlucky, but that that's my first hole in one on, on 2K23. 
Um, I didn't get one on 2K21, but I did on uh, 19, I think it was. But that was uh, good that I got it recorded anyway. So, got a par 4, 13th. Um, I mean, this looks like a fairly standard... Oh, no, I remember this one, yeah. So you've got a little area that you probably want to aim for here. Um, it doesn't look as big as it does in the actual map. So what, what you're aiming for is this sort of section here. So I'll just move that out of the way. But just after these bunkers, it looks quite large there. But when you look at it this way, it, it doesn't look as easy. I'll just aim to the left edge of this bunker. And hopefully I'll just... Uh, drift back in. So that, that's fine. That'll, uh, as long as I don't get a tricky bounce. No, nope, that's fine. Whew. Can't believe I actually got a hole in one um, whilst recording. That's amazing. Um, so it's about 130, about 135, 136. So I'll probably just add a bit of D-loft. And I'll aim just right of centre. Yeah, I should have aimed a lot further right, but ooh, big shadow. Kick right. No, nope. that's fine. So, again, this comes just based on experience. Now, I have seen some tips from. Um, other people about methods they use for putting, so counting methods and um, how fast the beads are moving, and there's different ways you can do it, but, and I have tried some of them, and some of them are actually quite effective, but the, there's a lot of counting and time consuming, and I don't we just go for sort of gut feel. Obviously, I look at it, and I can sort of imagine you know, the speed of this and how that's going to affect, and Downhill puts have, um, the slope has more of an effect, um, uphill puts not as much. So this is slightly uphill, uh, negligible really, but I would say this is probably, yeah, about three quarters, mm, maybe should have aimed a little bit further right, I'm not sure. Yeah, a bit further right. So it was more, not quite a full, like a grid line, but. And often I'm <laughs> I can tell sometimes, even when I'm just about to take the shot, and I'm, I, I, if I feel like I'm second guessing myself, I'm normally right, and I end up, you know, missing the shot. And if I'd have gone with what I really thought, I probably would have gone in. So. Uh, par four. Ah, yeah. So you've got a distinct sort of plateau here, and then you've got. It's not even a dog left. It's just a. It's a like almost like a ninety degree turn here. So what you really want to do is get close to these bunkers as close as you can, really, without going in them. Um, so probably aim the wind. Yeah, just about there. Hopefully, don't hit the tree. Well, I'm clearly going to hit the tree. It's a bit silly, but uh, doesn't want to affect it too much. And from what I remember, yeah, it's a massive uphill. Oh, this tree's in the way. Um, up 69, good score. Um, so that's about 23. So that's about 209. And the wind. Oh. And I'm going to have to try and get it around here. Do you know what? I'm going to go for a wood because what you've got is this slope here. So even if you overshoot it a bit, as long as you don't massively overshoot it, it should come back down. So if I put a lot of... Uh, oh, this might... This could go wrong. Um, yeah, I just couldn't really get the, the draw on it as much as I wanted while risking just going straight into the tree. So this is going to be a, a tricky putt. What about 40 foot is it? 50 foot. Ooh. Now there is an option where you can add the putt preview 
and initially I did start having them on and then I reduced it to just having three that you could use in a round and then after a while although in this sort of put it would be really useful so basically what you do is you aim and then you can use a put preview and it shows you if you aim here at the power you're aiming at this is where it'll go it'll show you exactly um but I didn't really like it uh it did feel like cheating in a way um so yeah I'm not going to do that it's it's useful to get an idea of how it how the ball slopes on the how the ball moves on the slopes and things like that and I totally understand people using it but um, I've gotten used to just not using it now what I'll probably do is I'll, I'm going to name a full square over here I think um, just with the distance it's got to carry now this may be over it a little bit oh just a bit short is it is going to go in oh. that was almost perfect and a two put from there is um, more than enough. That's fine. So, hole 15, another par 3. I think we've got one more par 3 after this. Um, this is another nice one. You've got a little slope here. So it's quite a small green. Lots of bunkers, water. But it's forgiving if you manage to get it on the green. Um, most of the time. So this will play about say 159, we'll say 160, the wind's helping a bit, so maybe like 155-ish, which is a 9-9, which is good. Um, I think I'll add a, a tiny bit of loft, just a little bit, and we'll aim for sort of the centre of that bunker, put a tiny... Oh, shh. Okay. <laughs> so what happened there was, is I just totally let go of the mouse. And once you've let go, that, um, you've let go of the power. You've set the power then, so you have to take the shot. And I've done about three or four times, um, which isn't a massive amount, but about three or four times since I've bought the game. And every time I do that, I then just forget, I just panic and I don't press any button at all. Now, there wasn't too bad, so we're in the light rough. So if we can get this near the hole and then a one putter, that would be great. But um, I think with the with the rough and the wind, I'm going to play that as about as is. Um, I think... Oh, that went massively right. I couldn't... Oh, yeah. I couldn't see the lie. Um, so I need to get this in, really. Um, what's down for a splash shot? What happens if I go for... Yeah, let's go for a chip. I don't know if that's really... The chips work out of the bunker. Well, <laughs> if I didn't aim that far, it would have. Oh, this is a disaster. Right edge. Yeah. Well, that was... Whew, that was bad. Um, par five. And... Ah, yes. Another interesting one. You've got two roots. Now, the route we're currently aiming for is over here. Um, and then I think if you're there, yeah, you can't, you're probably not going to make the, the green from there. So you then basically lay up here and then there. What you can do is you can go this route, which I'll show you in a minute. And you can actually aim, there's like a, a cliff edge there. You, if you land on here, you've got a, a decent shot in the green. So what we'll do is we might as well go for it. Now the wind's helping a little bit. It's just starting to turn towards this way now. So I'll take my shot fairly quickly because this can change direction. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure you avoid that cliff edge. This <laughs> trouble is the wind's probably going to take it towards this bunker. Um, 
I'm just going to hope for the best that it doesn't go in a bunker. And it makes it. It's going to easily make it, but decent bounce. Good bounce. Good bounce. That's, that's actually a really nice roll there as well. It's going to be above my feet, so it's going to move quite a little quite a bit left but as you can see we've got a decent shot here so um, yeah with the with the wind aim a bit short and that carries momentum as well but there's a bit of a slope here so it can bring it back to the hole um, it's going to go fairly left and the wind's going left so I'm going to aim about there I want to go too far left rather than right, so that's fine. That's a decent shot. And this is for Eagle, so downhill, so now remember because you tend to put it a bit slower on the downhill, the slope seems to take more of an effect. Um, I think I'm going to aim just right of middle there. No, that was too far. It didn't really move much at all. Probably overthinking that one a little bit. But there you go, 9 under through 16. Not bad, not bad. That hole in one definitely helped. Had a few shot the holes though. Now this is one of the most interesting par threes. Um, it's, as you can see, it's 235 foot. It's down 42. Now, I've seen similar ones like that, but then when you look at the green, look how small this green is. You've got surrounded by bunkers and then, you know, water. Um, now, down 42 is about 14. So this plays about 230. So that's about right, and if I put a lot of loft on and aim about here to account for the wind, because this is slope and right, so if it goes slightly too far left, not over here, but around about here, it might go this way anyway. So and because we can put quite a lot of loft on, this should stop fairly quickly, although that's um, ah, it's a bit unlucky. The wind actually started to carry that. I think the wind moved slightly forward. Um, but never mind. Um, I'm going to put a fair bit of loft on this, a little bit of spin, aim a little bit harder. Um, this is actually going left, so I'm going to aim over here. This could be in. Close, but that's one of my favorite. It's just just a such an unusual par three. I really love it. Um, and this is the last hole, so we're gonna have a quick look at the overview here. So what you've got is, um, you've got the the graves of the spa here. Um, apparently, if you if you watch the post Spartan gamers video, it describes this. You've got these big stone pillars. I see the graves over here, um, like monuments. It's a par four, so it looks, in terms of a golf inside, it's it's relatively not simple, but you pretty just want to get a good drive in here, and you've got a shot at the shot at the green. Um, this bit's a little bit tricky, so you want to aim. The wind's actually in a good place here, so I probably had a little bit of uh, fade on. And you kind of want to aim just around about here and, and fade it back in over here just to miss that pillar, hopefully. And obviously the bunker you don't want to hit, but it should easily miss that. Miss the pillar, that's fine. And we'll have a shot into the green. A nice even lie. Just watch that tree there. Um. Might actually have to to fade this in. Yeah, in fact, I will. No 
obviously the wind's going that anyway and the fade will exacerbate that even more. Um, so yeah, it's going way right, but that's fine. I, I didn't want to go anywhere near that bunker. And it stopped quite a bit quicker because fade and draws can take a little bit of power out of it as well, a little bit of distance. Now, can we get this uh, 25 footer in to finish? That'd be nice. Um, I think about there. But anyway, such a nice course. I think this is the third or fourth time I've played it now. Absolutely love it. Um, can't believe I've actually got my first all in one on this game. Um, I think I've had it for about two or three weeks. And, you know, I'm not the best at this game, but i um, pretty proud to get that all in one. But I hope anyone watching can give this course a try. Um, like I say, it's called the Arenas of Sparta. There we go. Arenas of Sparta by the Pro Spartan Gamer. What I'll do is I'll leave a, a link to the video he uploaded, showcasing this a little bit and talking about it. I know he put a lot of time into it, about 30 to 40 hours. And I think he's looking to potentially do some more. But it's a lot of it's a lot of work. So, you know, if you can go and watch his video, I'm sure that will help um, if he gets a lot of views on that. And, um, yep. Yeah. Pro Spot Game, if you're watching it as well, just thank you for for letting me know about this and, and let me try this and and I will give you a heads up that I might record it and you were you were you know good with that. So thank you for that. And um hopefully in the future we might have some more videos and you never know, we might see some more hole in ones. But um yeah, thank you very much for joining and I'll see you next time.